Hey, you guys. Hello, hello, hello. Thank you so much for being here today. We are super excited. I'm super excited to have an amazing guest on Let's Be Clear, you guys. For those of you who do not know who I am, my name is Tamara Burton. I am the founder of this amazing platform, Let's Be Clear, uh, which stems to life after divorce. As you can see, I'm repping per usual. <laughs> Nice. Uh, nice. After divorce, you guys, it's a movement and not a moment. And so um, my mission, my vision, my goal with this movement is to help those who have been divorced get through the process to um, to get to healing, get back to that space of being happy, healthy and healed, understanding that it's a process. And it's a journey and you have to be ready to do it because it comes with ups, downs, ebbs, flows, good, bad, you know, it kind of, um, it's one day at a time pretty much. And so I have committed to locking arms with men and women who have experienced divorce and what, what I would say the traumatic experience of divorce. I want to be very clear. Let's be clear. I am not an advocate for divorce, but I do advocate for the man or woman who has experienced divorce who's ready to put the pieces back together, don't know where to start, trying to figure out who am I? Because oftentimes when we marry, we become what society says, family says, mama, daddy, sister, and brother says we should be as a husband or as a wife. And we put ourselves on a back burner. But here's the kicker. Many times, a lot of us um, never really knew who we were, so to speak, and we go into a marriage or a, a relationship, and we become who they say we are. So even if it ends, now we're trying to find ourselves. And that's the unfortunate part, but I deal with um, th that a lot with uh, many women and men. And so um, that's what this platform is all about, just the, the process of healing, getting back to happy, healthy, and heal individual that we should be, that we were created to be. So Without any further ado, I have an amazing guest tonight. Um, I am so excited to speak with um, my guest. Uh, he is one of the co-authors of the last book that was released, um, Life After Divorce, The Men Tool Box, you guys. And so many of you heard me speak often about these men that God had sent me, right? And I literally say God sent me these guys because it's no, it's no joke. It's all business, right? We all have locked arms and we're serious about it. Like they've become my brothers and I can reach out to them and I can share or I can ask a question and they will respond, you know, just straight up. There is no, there is nothing crazy going on, but just real, um, real sisterly, brotherly love, so to speak. And so mm -hmm. I believe it's a blessing um, that God has placed us in this compartment of our lives, in this season of our lives, to connect with each other on what the world would say is such a negative, right? Divorce, like, oh my God. You know, mm -hmm. not too often do people really want to talk about that, but we're really not talking about divorce. We're talking about processing through it. We're talking about the healing portion of it. And so again, I have my brother, Scott Looney, <laughs> that is here with me. Um, he's got, we're going to just talk, discuss. You guys know that this platform is a real... Um, just, just the upfront discussion, you know, there is no plan. Uh, of course, we know what we're going to talk about, but I don't write out many questions, um, so mm. to speak, because I want it to be a natural flow, right? Um, I truly believe that folks understand or we can reach people, we can touch people um, when we do it that way. And so um, welcome, 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 Thank Scott. You. Thank so you. Much for A, being a part of the movement. Mm -hmm. Way over there in Boise, Idaho. <laughs> Y'all, we, we on the map. We on the map. Yes, yeah, I'm yes. on the map. I'm finally yes. I'm finally here. I know the last time we did the uh, the the men's toolbox show, my Wi-Fi was working so poorly that I had to back out and jump off because I wanted to hear all the great stuff you were saying and those other gentlemen were saying. And I feel so bad that that didn't work. So even though we had a little technical difficulties today. Tonight, you and I are speaking, and uh, I'm glad to glad to see you again. Um, yeah. You you have been a blessing to all of us. Your your ability to reach out and connect people um, is uh, unbelievable, and you uh, personally have put so much time and effort into all of this and and the movement. And let's be clear and and rise up. I'll, everything that you're you're touching 
impacts so many people. And I just want to give you some credit um, where it's due, because I don't know that you get as much credit as you should for doing everything you do. So thank, thank you. you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. I want you to tell the people about who you are. <laughs> okay. Give okay. them a little, give them a little bit about you. I'll give them a little test. Yeah, we'll get a little taste. Well, first of all, I got to say the shout out for the first Celtics of all Celtics winning uh, championship number championship number eighteen. You know, I did this all day. So uh, my family, um, you know, mom and dad are big Celtics fans. They made us big Celtics fans and uh, got the championship number eighteen last night. So that was a big deal. Um, but a little bit about me is I'm an author. It's my first book. Um, Finding the Elixir. I'm going to do a little shameless promotion right there. There we go. It's on Amazon and, uh, you know, can be found pretty easily out there. Um, the book, uh, gosh, it took me two and a half years to write, Tam. Um, I went through a divorce. Uh, it's been 10, no, it's 11 years ago now. And I started going through all the emotions that everybody in divorce goes through, the pain, the guilt, the hurt, the, you know, the anger and then you kind of get to this point of you know what i need to have resolve and i need to build on that resolve because i really want to be happy again and find happiness and find hope and so my book is kind of about all those things and um like i said the catalyst for it was the divorce from 11 years ago and people ask me well did you have a book in mind right then and I'm, the answer is no not at all it wasn't it wasn't even a thought I didn't even think about it. Um, I've never written a book before. And so I've never gone through a divorce before either. And so <laughs> that was the catalyst for the book. But I started going on all of these trips, uh, Tam. And the, the amazing thing is, is um, uh, none of it was pre-scheduled. I mean, it was, there were so many people that I met and I'm a people person, so it, it was helpful, but I met a lot of people um, some were, you know, there for a, a season, some were there for a reason, you know, and, and, and those things are all so true because people come in and out of our lives, as you mentioned, um, for reasons. And I had, I, I was blessed to have so many people come into my life. Um, plus I had my family and friend network that really kind of helped build me back up mm -hmm. after divorce, mm -hmm. but I ended up going on some travels that, um, were unexpected, unplanned. Um, I didn't have the money for most of them, but yet some somehow, some way, there were there were ways that I was able to pay for them and and or um, uh, you know have them come about to where they were super cheap and I could afford it. So never had happened before. But I was journaling throughout these whole thing, uh, the all of these trips, because I was going through so much and processing so much of my divorce. Uh, married for sixteen years and together for 18 and it's a significant portion of my life and I didn't know what I was doing and so these journals that I ended up writing uh documenting these trips and the people I was meeting ended up becoming um I took excerpts from from my journal my actual journals and I put them into the beginning chapters of my book so people that are curious but well, what was he thinking eight years ago or four years ago when he was going through all this stuff that you can see that in my book, you can read those things. I don't put all the stuff in there because some of it's kind of personal. And so I don't put all the journals, but I lead every chapter with a journal. Nice. Nice. I love that. And I, I, I must tell you that my first book, well, my second book. So the first book was the marriage policies and procedures that can be right. for uh, someone that is preparing for marriage or a relationship um, mm -hmm. someone or a couple that's already married, that's perfect for them. But my right. second book, which led um, me to this life after divorce uh, movement, is called right. Life After the D. Um, and that was just me. And it's exactly what you said. Mm -hmm. It's excerpts of my my journal. Like it's called, right. it's Life After Divorce, but it's He Said, She Said. Many right. people thought that He Said was my ex-husband, but it wasn't. <laughs> that he said was in response to it was God in response to what I had written in my journals, my yeah, yeah my journal. So as I was going through my um, separation and my divorce, mm -hmm. I would write my emotions, my feelings, my thoughts, my sadness, my happiness, all of the different emotions that I was experiencing. And there was times where God would speak to me immediately, and I'd write it down like in response to what I wrote. And right. there were times where it took weeks for him to say anything. I just go back over what I had written. Mm -hmm. I read 
and then he'd speak to me and I'd write down what he said. And so that book, Life After yeah, Divorce, yeah. He Said, She Said, is my journal. I didn't know that it was a part <laughs> of your journal, excerpt from your journal, just like mine. I think that is yeah. so dope because yeah. when you are going through something as traumatic as that, like you said, you said that you never wrote a book before. Mm. You said, well, I've never went through divorce before. Right. So after right divorce, you, you become a person you've never met. And so now <laughs> you're trying to figure out this new way of moving, yeah. this new way of thinking, this mm -hmm. new way of being, and who am I now as a divorcee? Yeah. Yeah. And it's a lot. It's a lot. So you traveled a lot. I did. I did. That was my therapy. Yeah. Yeah. That was my therapy, Tam, without even like, I didn't say, well, I'm going to go out and travel so I can get out. No, I didn't. I, I, I didn't know what to do. And so mm -hmm. I, I, I started traveling. Some of the things, you know, a lot of these were so unplanned and so spontaneous. And I used to be a very type A. I'm still type A, but not so much. Like if we we're on a continuum, I've gone from type A to like, I'm like almost type B now. So okay. I've moved a lot and grown a lot. Um, okay. But traveling was my therapy. That was a change in perspective opportunity. It was the opportunity to say yes more. Uh, it was an opportunity to, to, you know, get out of my doldrums, my sadness, my anger, uh, my frustration at like, how did this happen? Why am I in this position? Travel gave me the opportunity to see all these different perspectives. And, and I realized that if I just say yes a little bit more uh, to people and places and things, that it, there's a whole world out there that can, that can make us feel better. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's not a perfect world. We both know that. We, yeah. Everybody who's watching this knows that. But yeah. there's a lot of good people out there. And yeah. Um, yeah, and I learned I learned that firsthand on some of these travels, and I realized, you know what, I can do this. Like this, it took a while. Not gonna lie, it took a while, <laughs> but, yeah. but it did take me a minute. But it, um, you know, once I got to a point of understanding that, uh, you know, it was it was it was basically you say you say yes to more things, you get out of your comfort zone, um, and you start building these memories. and And I called them in my book mental bookmarks. I started mm. mentally bookmarking things like how did that place like being in Wrigley Field, how did that make me feel the first time I was in Wrigley Field in Chicago and and in in Paris? I went to Paris for the first time about five years ago. I didn't I didn't have never been to Paris before. And uh, I thought that, oh, I'll do that when I'm 62 and 65 when I'm retired. And no, I did it five years ago. So, yeah. You know, it's things like that that really changed my perspective and really helped me out of my funk uh, post-divorce. And I've never looked back. I mean, uh, I look back at what I've learned and, uh, you know, it's something that I put in the book that one of my uncles has told me, uh, told me at the very beginning, he said, someday, someday, Scott, you're going to look back at this and you're going to be thankful and grateful to your ex-wife. And I was like, mm, no, no, that's not possible. That's not, no, don't even say that. That's dumb. Yeah. <laughs> it turns out yeah. he's right. <laughs> like, right. I'm, I'm, I'm so, so far on the other side of divorce now that it, I am grateful. Now, I'm not going to walk up to her and say, thank you for putting me through that pain. Right, right, but, right. But, but I'm not angry. I'm, I'm happy for her. I'm, I'm happy for me. You know, I am thankful to her in a weird roundabout way. I get it. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? I do. I do. So, I definitely understand. Um, and you said earlier that you were able to say yes to people a little mm -hmm. more. But I want to I, I want to I want to stay right there for a second, because oftentimes we think we are saying yes to other people. Really, what you did was say yes to yourself. True. You gave yourself permission to think differently, to do things different from how you would normally do it. You yep. didn't wait until you retired to travel to, you know what I'm saying? Like you said, yep. right now, if there's no better time than to do it right now. Yep. And the Bible says that, um, that God will make a way of escape, right? So as you were going through your journey and your process of mm -hmm. healing, his way of giving, helping you um, get through that thing was through your traveling. And that's how nice. he dealt with it with you for someone right. else he did it a different way right and so 
I truly believe, I know that we are all one body, but many members. And so when yeah. we talk about healing after divorce, how you healed and the, the way that you're sharing your story in your book, um, which were just pretty much your, your entries on your emotions yeah. and your feelings. It was in real time that you were yeah. writing that. Someone yeah. is able to receive that, um, mm -hmm. read that and say, okay, not I have to go through it the same way that Scott went through it, but right. because Scott went through it, that, that gives me hope. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And so I'm so grateful that <laughs> you even made yourself available to write and to Thank share. You. Cause you, we can write. I have tons of journals. Yeah. I have tons of notes where I've written down some things. And like you yeah. said, you don't get everything because some <laughs> things are real personal, right? You'd be like, damn, yeah. are you serious? <laughs> Yeah, yes. some things nobody should be reading. I don't even want to read it. I don't even want to read it. Like, gosh, was I feeling that way? Is that what I thought? Lord, forgive me. Listen, well, but I Tam, love I'll tell I'll tell you this that I love everything you just said. Um, the the uh, saying yes to ourselves that is such such a vital piece to yeah. uh, transitioning into singlehood or you know transitioning into that point of where you can start being happy again. That that point at which you start seeing there's hope um, because when you're going through it, the hope, the hope meter is really low. Um, but once you get through it a little bit more, a little bit, a little bit more, your hope meter goes up. And um, for me, and just a, a, a success story, I guess, if you will, um, about a week ago, I got um, an email from uh, a, a woman that read my book in, uh, in Raleigh, North Carolina. I've never been to North Carolina, um, but she read my book and had some great things to say say uh, on it. She left me a, a really wonderful Amazon review, um, but she reached out to me uh, and just said, thank you. I've been going through some life transitions, not necessarily divorce, but career transitions, life transitions. Um, you know, and my book is for people that, you know, had maybe they're dealing with a death or maybe they're dealing with divorce or maybe they're dealing with a career change. You know, it's, it's, it's all these things that we all deal with at some point in our lives, but she reached out and she said, thank you. And she, she, she said uh, some of what you said, she's see, she's saying yes to herself more and she's she's opening the door to being you know getting out of her comfort zone she's being more vulnerable and she thanked me for being vulnerable in my writing and i look back now and i, I you know i was i was very vulnerable and i think you what you do um you know with your organizations with your books you're the same way you've opened up you're you're very vulnerable even though you and i are not sharing every word we writ we wrote right. in our journals um okay. We're both being very vulnerable because I think it comes from this place of hoping that what we went through can and help it will help others. And when I got that that email from her, I mean, I can't tell you how good that made me feel. Just like, okay, that's one person I guarantee um, that my experiences have helped, and I've had that from others too. But that just happened, you know, last week. So anyway, it's a good success story. I love it. I love success stories. I love it. And and you know what? What happens in that? It's actually continues to fuel our fire, right? Yeah. Because, you know, yeah. we have to be honest that sometimes it can be a little tiring. It mm -hmm. can be overwhelming, right? We're saying, we're pretty much saying and sharing the same thing over and over again, hoping right. that we're actually reaching and touching someone. And I know that we are, but sometimes mm -hmm. it just, it can be a little wear and tear. And so when we have just one person that yeah. says, hey, what you wrote really helped me, it right there for me is like a boost, not and not from an arrogant place, right? You know, but just from a reminder that yeah. what I went through was not just for me. It was for a time such as this. It was for her. It was for him. Mm -hmm. It was for this season, right? And so right. that helped me to continue to go, you know. And so yeah. because life doesn't stop, regular right. everything else is still going, That's right? right. That's Everything right. else is still going. It does not stop. There's still other things that's happening in my life as just as a mother um, yeah. and, and, you know, a friend, a daughter, all types of the homeowner, all of those things. There's there's life that's happening. Right. It doesn't seem, okay, so while Tam is over here uh, preparing mm -hmm. for this speaking engagement, we're going to hold this up <laughs> until she completes that. No, simultaneously, yeah. I have to... Uh, be Tam the speaker, Tam the mom, Tam the employee, Tam the employer, Tam the, like I have to be all of those things in yeah. one 
But I yeah. also have to, as a believer, I have to represent God in all mm -hmm. of those things, right? And that's right. not always the easiest thing right. to represent <laughs> him because sometimes, not that I don't want to represent him, but I don't have the energy sometimes. I'm tired. Right. <laughs> tired. That's just called being human. We're just human beings, you know? I mean, yeah. there, some days there's only so much we can do because we do, you said it perfectly, Tam. We all wear these different hats, not just today, not just tomorrow. Every single day, every single hour, there's different things that we're called to do or asked to do, whether it's public speaking. I'm getting into public speaking this year too, so that's a new realm for me. I might be talking to you about that later, um, but uh, public speaking, you know, I'm working on a second book. There's all these different things that, you know, are going on and going into the day and working, you know, got a job to do and everything else. So, you know, family and friends, but it is, yeah, I mean, it's, and it's like that for, for each and every one of us. And I, I love that you have taken your platform and you just been, I, I mean, just from the stuff that you've done town, I just got, I can't stop complimenting you because you, everything you're doing this, this whole idea, you could have come through your divorce and just talked about you, 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 women, 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 and you didn't. You you gave that message and you've, you've delivered that message because that's who you are. That's what you should do. But you've opened the door for gentlemen like me and the other gentlemen that were on that phone call that we tried to do a month ago or two months ago. Um and I can't tell you how much that meant to not only me, but uh, I'm sure each of those gentlemen on the phone or on the, on that call um, that you opened the door, you were saying, Hey, you know what? This isn't just a one, one sided thing. This is yeah. it impacts men and women. And yeah. I, again, I can't tell you, thank you enough for, for you seeing us and, and, and acknowledging us and giving us a little bit of the platform as well. So I just, I know your listeners and your readers and, and viewers are, are appreciative of that as well. Thank you so much, Scott. I appreciate you. Thank you for those words. Um, so to end it, if there was one thing or if there was something that you could share with a, a man who has gone through divorce or is going through divorce, if yeah. there's something, if there's a, a some of your elixir that you could share okay. with him um, in his healing process, what would that be? Oh, that's a great question. Oh boy. Um, I would say the biggest thing that, that I would recommend, um, and again, this worked for me so I can recommend it. Um, uh, and I think it can work for a lot of people is really cultivate connections. I'm, I'm a people person and, and I, I genuinely enjoy meeting new people, but Cultivating connections means meeting new people and 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 you know seeing who you vibe with, um, but also return to the people that that have always been there in your life, your family, especially your friends, your religion, um, you know the people and places that you've been to that made you happy. Um, for me, the Oregon coast is you know nine hour drive from from Boise. But I go there as often as I can. Um, it's not like monthly. I wish it was, but it's not. I can't afford that. But um, it's cultivating connections. And it doesn't have to be a, a person or people. It can be a place. Like for me, the ocean. I, I cultivate that connection by trying to go back as often as I can. Maybe it's once a year. Maybe it's twice a year, three times a year, whatever it is. If you cultivate those connections um, as a human being and you're cultivating these things and you're intentional about reconnecting with people, family, friends, you know, God, whoever it is, or wherever it is, the mountains, the ocean, the desert, doesn't matter. Do yeah. those things as often yeah. as you can. Yeah, I love that. That's good. And I'm sitting, I'm sitting here, you use the word cultivate a few times. And so I'm like, mm -hmm. let me pull the definition. I'm big on that. Like I want to, because we will use a word and we know what it means. You know, yeah. we know exactly what it means. But it's yeah. something about reading the actual definition that right. kind of opens it up or bring more life to it. And so yeah. I wanted to do that. <laughs> so perfect. You, you use cultivate. You're a teacher also, right? I am. I do. <laughs> I, I teach you as sister. Yes. <laughs> yes. Good memory. Yes, I remember that. Um, so <laughs> it says cultivate. It says to prepare and use. Uh, for crops or gardening. So that's the verb. Um, it says tr to try to acquire or develop. And that is what you're saying. When yeah. you use the term cultivate, you're yeah. saying 
to um to acquire it to develop it right so as right. we develop you can only develop something that you're continuously working on mm -hmm. right yeah. you can't just show up and think that it's going to just appear and be right. done right you know in order for us to get better at this thing called healing after divorce we have to cultivate those relationships mm -hmm. we have to build we have to communicate we have to be open we have to share and sometimes that can be a little scary yeah. Um, and, and we want to, because if you were raised to believe, and I know a lot of, in our culture, um, mm -hmm. a lot of our culture have been taught what happens in the house stays in the house. And yeah. so we have taken that on into our relationships, our adult relationships, mm -hmm. whether it be work or kids, um, marriage, yeah. you know? And so Absolutely. now we're in a season um, right now where we're saying, no, talk about it, you know, right. go to counseling, get some therapy, but right. get it out because it's better out than it is in. Right. Agreed. Yeah. Agreed. Yeah. yeah. And I think cultivating that, I'm glad you looked that up because it is, it's acquiring, it's developing, you know, it's, if you go back to the gardening example, you can't just drop seeds and, you know, hope that things grow without water or tilling or anything else. That's you good. have to develop it. You have to, you have to make it work and you said it, you can't just you know leave things alone you you have to work at it and develop it and i think that goes with you know whether it's uh, you know a garden or, or friendships or you know relationships or or whatever yeah. you we as human beings we have to work at this stuff and uh i think by doing that i think we find out you know more about ourselves but i think we also learn that hey we're not the only ones going through things like this. There's a lot of people out there, um, not only in this country, but in this world that are going through what we're going through uh, different circumstances, but sure. same thing. And when you acquire um, or, or cultivate and develop these relationships, um, nine times out of 10, I'm going to say they're just helping you positively. And I think it's helping the other people as well. So it's win-win. Yeah. Yeah. Super dope. I love it. <laughs> well, Scott, I want to thank you so much for being a part mm. of the movement. I want to thank you for joining um, for this discussion. I don't call them interviews. I call them <laughs> discussions because that's exactly it. what it is. Yeah. We're just, you know, going back and forth as if we yeah. are sitting across the table from each other having dinner or a cup of coffee. I right? love it. Yeah. Thank you for being comfortable enough to share your story. Um, thank Absolutely. you for being obedient with writing in your journal and then bringing it to life for others to read. I really appreciate that. I don't take it for granted that you are another uh, link in the chain of helping mm -hmm. people to heal. So thank you so much. I appreciate you. And I uh, will be talking to you soon. Okay. Thank you so much, Tam, for all you do. And uh, I'm proud to lock arms with you. Absolutely. <laughs> Bye, you guys. <laughs>